Atrix Path of Neo Game Review. This takes you through all three movies and goes slightly beyond with some new scenes that weren't in the movies, obviously, because otherwise the game would be even shorter than it already is. Again, let's do the most pertinent question right up ahead. Better or worse than Enter the Matrix? And is it the same thing or not? It's more or less the same thing. It's like the 2.0 version of Enter the Matrix. We're talking still not that good of a game, still not all that polished. I have no idea how that even happened because this wasn't even... I mean, maybe it sort of fits under the licensed game umbrella because it does relate directly to the movies, but this came out in 2005. That's two years after End of the Matrix, two years after the films came out. They had plenty of time. Was someone holding a gun to their head saying, you know, 2005, no later then? And they didn't have time? I don't know, but yeah, anyway, better or worse than End of the Matrix? For my money, it's worse. Maybe not by all that much, and hey, it's my opinion, it's subjective. Let's go into the specifics. Basically, Everything you see Neo do, this pretty much allows you to do. Although you don't particularly fly, you can sort of, you know, levitate, I guess, and use that in fighting. So yeah, you can, you know, run along walls and, you know, do acrobatics, you can fight and you can engage in some pretty decent shootouts. About the acrobatics, I think it's a little sad that the makers of the Matrix games had to be taught how to do this kind of thing from the more recent Prince of Persia games. We're talking as of, the, yeah, as of Sands of Time and, you know, onwards from that one, and that they still messed it up. Yeah, this actually, I swear, there's one particular move directly from that, I mean, there are several moves directly from those games, but there's one that they only even use once in the, or I only used it that one time in the training segment. Yeah. The levels are part of the problem here. Some of them are really, really cool, definitely, and it is fun to reenact some of what Neo does in the films. You know, I'm. Before I got this, I was wondering if they would actually go ahead and have you, you know, hide out from the agents and the cops. You know, in. Metacortex, I think it's called, the, the company where Neo works. And yes, they do. And it at least starts out kind of fun. Part of the problem arises when they have to think of levels to fill in between. You know, because of course, you know, I mean, if you just go with the levels that are directly based on stuff you see in the movie, movies, it's not going to last that long. I understand that. And some of what they come up with to fill in the gaps is interesting. You, you know, in between what you see in the movies, you protect some of the characters that you see in some of the movies. You, you even meet new characters, although they don't particularly have a lot of personality. But, you know, you go on missions that you hadn't heard of Neo going on at all. And some of that is kind of fun, though some of it it's just strange, and that's really part of the problem here. There's a lot of strange, bizarre stuff. Two words, ant level. That's all I'm going to tell you. And, and that's not all. There's... When you get to the Merovingian, there's... It's this surreal level that I don't know what they were trying to do with, but it just, it's strange. And the game breaks the fourth wall like nobody's business. I'm not against these things 
per se, but what are they doing in a Matrix game? I mean, at least before the sequels, Matrix used to take itself pretty seriously, you know, it used to have this kind of... I mean, they were trying to inspire spirituality in the young generation, and now we have someone sitting in a theater commenting on a fight that's going on as you're fighting. That That's just... I don't know, what what is it doing here? Yeah. The... The combat is decent enough, and there's something kind of cool. You, For example, you can grab the arms of enemies and kind of tie them together. Such as you see somewhat in the, the you know, Massive Smith battle. It's, you know, reloaded. And that can be pretty fun. And it works well as well. But one thing about the fighting, to, to block a, an attack, you have to strike. So basically, if you're attacking, you're pressing one button, and if you're blocking the enemy's attack, you're pressing that same button. I don't know, I guess something like that could have worked in the game. Here it just kind of doesn't. Yeah, it's just kind of awkward. You get to fight with, you know, some martial arts weapons such as swords and a bow staff here. And that can be pretty cool. That's, that's genuinely fun. And yes, you do get to use, you know, the signpost in the to fight against all the smiths. Again, you know, they do recreate the major fight scenes and yeah, and that is sometimes pretty fun. The boss battles usually really aren't fun. This game goes back and forth between being really really easy and just frustratingly difficult. In fact, it kind of goes back and forth between the extremes that, that's a real theme for this game. And about it being easy, in theory, playing as Neo does sound like fun, but when you think of it, when, when you look at the sequels, when in the Matrix, do as the Matrix ends, no, he doesn't have a lot of trouble, let's be perfectly honest, as of, you know, the end of the first film, Neo doesn't have a lot of challenges in the Matrix. It's kind of, I mean, you know, from the beginning of Reloaded, it's kind of, what am I supposed to do? Not, how do I do it? You know, it's, I mean, he even shows it. He shows his utter arrogance every time he fights someone. You know, it, it's not going to be that challenging. Because, you know, it isn't for him. He's he's the Messiah, you know. It's Jesus kicking ass, basically. So, yeah, when, when you really think about it, it doesn't, it isn't actually that difficult, and that's something games kind of do need. Shooting is fun enough, and this time they actually add a crosshair, you know, you do actually aim, unlike Enter the Matrix, but the mouse is kind of screwy, and I really have to wonder why they added so few weapons. I mean, compare the arsenal in this to the arsenal in Enter the Matrix. Yeah, I really have no idea why they have so few in this one. I, okay, he doesn't fire that many guns as of, you know, from Reloaded and onwards, but still, in the first one, he packed an arsenal. The basically both Enter the Matrix and The Path of Neo overreach. You know, they try to do way more than they actually can with what they have at their disposal. And again, I have no idea why this one has so little at its disposal. I would say that Enter the Matrix is the one that comes out with less frustration and less just 
unnecessary WTF moments. You know, th this one is just full of them. I, I don't know why they added so much just bizarre stuff. I mean, yeah. There are some special abilities, but they tend to be not that compelling. The graphics are quite nice, with very, very fluid animation. Although Smith's face does look pretty hilarious. The sound is pretty good, although the voice acting gets to be pretty painful. Especially with Link. And can someone tell me when Merv turned German? The the level design isn't bad, although, again, it's entirely linear and feels it. I've only played this game once, and I don't know that I'll ever play it again. I haven't even, like, gone back and tried this one particular level. You know, it, that you maybe thought was fun. No, not even that. Just didn't... yeah. The game does give you a level selector, so, you know, you can, at any time, go back and replay an earlier level. And also, I believe twice, it gives you a mission selector, so you can, you know, there'll be a handful of missions, and you get to choose the order, basically. You know, you get to choose which one you want to do next. This changes the continuity and the plot some, that works out okay. The storytelling, I believe there's one CGI cutscene, and that one is great. Other than that, it's just in-engine stuff that's okay, and a Frankenstein's monster of recut footage from the entire trilogy. I have no idea why they did this. It's just... No matter how good your footage is, you can cut it up so badly that it just looks ugly and the audience just wants to get it over with. That's what happens here. Over and over. I have no idea why, why they went in that direction. At all. I suppose that's more or less it. You know, all in all, if you really want to play as Neo, you know, you can't just settle for playing as, you know, a rebel in the Matrix. And you want, you know, to reenact Neo's fights from the trilogy. I suppose this one. Yeah, it gets the job done, you know. And I will say that there's more freedom to the fighting, and this one, this time you do get combos, and it has the exact same problem that fighting games with combos always have, in my opinion. You know, you tend to just spam those moves, and that's kind of it, you know. There's, yeah, you tend to just... Use the really powerful stuff to take out the enemies, and you don't use that many different types of attacks. Where in you know, Enter the Matrix, you kind of had to wing it all the long, all along, you know, in the fights, and it was almost never really tied down into any, you know, you can attack in any direction, and yeah. By the way, I am basing this review on the PC version. I wouldn't rule out that some of the problems here are because this is geared towards consoles, somewhat like with Enter the Matrix, it's, you know, a port. The martial arts system can be kind of clumsy and sluggish, which yeah, really hinders the fun of, you know, beating people up. I also found the guns to be kind of useless a lot of the time, you know. I guess, again, just maybe they're going for, you know, you using martial arts more.
I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.